What is up, everybody? We are back. JD here. Extra Dough, Episode 4, brought to you by Daily Bread Media. Today, we're going to be talking about ACC conference title odds. They've been released. They are up, ready for the taking. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, really excited to get into it. The ACC, one of those conferences where um, it catches a lot of slack uh, because you know there aren't really those top teams outside of Clemson, and they were not last year. Uh, but I, I think that just makes it more interesting, right? There's a little bit more parity now, uh, a little bit more uncertainty, and that's uh, that's what you love when you're when you're watching sports. You don't know what's going to happen, and that's uh, what you would love usually from the gambling side as well. If there's any uncertainty, can we try to provide a little more clarity where there might not be in the market? So I'm looking forward to it, right? I'm not, I'm not going to make a video on the SEC where I talk about Georgia and Alabama for 20 minutes because who cares? Um, right. I mean, everybody already knows by now. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one. I think, uh, I think it's going to be a good discussion. So, all right, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm going to use Circa. These odds were released at Circa. Why, why show the Circa odds? I know they're up everywhere. Uh, no, they're not a sponsor for the show, but Circa has a very good reputation and, uh, and I like their odds the best to be perfectly honest with you. So here we have the, uh, the conference title odds. We're going to be diving into, uh, the ACC there. So you can see all the way down Duke at the bottom. Syracuse, not much better. Georgia Tech. Uh, I won't be covering any of those bottom feeders. Um, I'm really not interested in that. Um, I, I, they're not going to win. So what's the point? Um, so we're going to start at the top. We have Clemson at plus 150. Miami's right behind them at plus 475. Pittsburgh plus 575. North Carolina plus 750. And then NC State is once we start getting into our uh, plus 1000 territory. So first up let's talk about clemson let's talk about clemson there you see their schedule um they're going to be similar to last year and that the defense is going to be absolutely brutal and i'm sorry they're going to be it's going to be brutal to go against they're going to be very good and the offense is going to be brutal to watch because it was terrible last year uh they have some big answers uh they have, yeah some big questions to answer mainly Who's the quarterback? I talked about that in last week's video, so won't go into it too in-depth. But yeah, you have Cade Klubnick battling with DJU. Uh, you have a new staff. You have Tony Elliott. He's gone for Virginia. He was their offensive coordinator. Uh, a lot of people were calling for his head and wanted him to be fired. And uh, they got their wish because, well, he wasn't fired, but he uh, he took the job, the head coaching job at, at Virginia. So he's gone. Uh, they hired internally, hired Brandon Streeter. So I don't think there's a, a major change expected, but it's really the question of, is this change going to help? Because, right, if, if the offense falls as drastically as it did last year, they went from fourth in total scoring. They went from fourth in 2020 all the way down to 82nd. That's a drastic change, dropping almost 80 points per game. It just doesn't happen. They need to improve upon that. So a lot of the question is going to be on the quarterback. A lot of that's also going to be on Brandon Streeter. The offensive line does have to play, you know, have to play better. You also lose Brent Venables, who's one of the better coaches in college football, defensive coordinator. Um... Right, he left. He's been there a while. He he's always been rumored to have been taking other jobs, but he stayed, and the defense has always stayed elite under his watch. So that's that's another big question: is how do they look without Brent Venables back there? Um, that being said, the defense is nasty. They're going to continue to be great. They do lose a lot, but they're they're still going to be up there. They were eighth in EPA per play. Um, linebacker Trenton Simpson is going to be a breakout star. Um, you do rank 41st in returning production, so it looks good on the offensive side of the ball. You rank 17th uh, and then 80, 89th on defense, but I think we can expect that defense to maybe take a slight step back but still be elite, whereas on offense, I mean, it, it needs to drastically improve. 82nd in scoring is not going to cut it. You need the better quarterback play. Will Shipley's a start running back. You have some good wide receivers. I think Bo Collins is my favorite. Uh, Adam Randall, incoming freshman, if he returns healthy, he, he is the the making is a break of a breakout superstar, really. But um, there's a lot of questions. So I understand why they're the favorite at plus 150. I, I definitely would not recommend playing that. You know, you're getting cl close close enough to coin flip odds where you have a whole rest of the conference. And um, I'm not exactly sure I would recommend it, but you, you see the schedule there. Um, you go, have to go at Wake Forest. Uh, you get NC State at home, which is big. So I'll talk, I'll talk about them next. Um you know, at Florida State, that's not too challenging. You get Louisville at home, which is big. You get Miami at home, which is big. So overall, I think the schedule does set up pretty nicely, and I can't see why they are the favorite, even though I, I, I don't love the odds. All right, next up, going to be one of my favorite pet teams. So if you listen at all to um, 
to these videos, which hopefully you are. Hopefully you made it this far. Um, but paid for play, we're gonna be we're gonna be at it Saturday mornings with Daily Bread Media discussing the slate. I'm sure I'll mention NC State a lot. They're one of my favorite teams this year. Um, at plus ten hundred odds, I, I just I think that's far too wide. Um, you saw some some power rankings were actually released. I, I saw some of these professional gamblers are releasing their power rankings, and they had NC State, uh, you know, within the top ten, and that made me not feel as crazy for liking NC State as much as I do because I do think they should be a top ten team heading into this year, and I think they will be. Um, first off, you bring back seventeen starters. That's the most in the conference. You rank twelfth in returning production overall, thirty seventh offensively, and fifth on defense. Uh, and I think that's big. You, re, you uh, were 18th in EPA per play a year ago. And I think we're going to take a step forward there, honestly. The defense with that much returning production, um, I think the defense is going to get even better. And then offensively, you have Devin Leary back at quarterback. Um, I'm a huge Devin Leary fan. He, The Wolfpack are 12-4 and four in games he started over the last two years. He had a 35 touchdown uh, to 5 interception TD to INT ratio. Um, I'm, I'm a huge believer in Leary. I was really talking him up last year. He's really one of my favorite quarterbacks, honestly, in college football. He can really sling it around. And then um, I don't know if I'm happy for him or mad that people have kind of finally figured it out because <laughs> there were some mock drafts released uh, over the summer, early summer. And uh, of course, Leary's like a first round pick on some of these. So I don't know if he'll be a first round pick, but I, I certainly think he has a chance to, especially if the Wolfpack uh, have another good season, which I think they will. So the big question for them, right? Because that's an overwhelming amount of positives. The big question is, can they take that next step forward and can they compete with the big boys? Um, they beat Clemson in double overtime last year. So I think we've, we've seen that. Yeah, they can certainly hang with the big boys. Uh, and I think they're only going to get better. So the ACC is wide open. I don't think Clemson's going to be dominant. I, I see why they're the favorite, but it's not like they're they're totally dominant. I mean, that offense is going to have to score the ball, right? Uh, and Clemson almost lost to Georgia Tech last year, for Christ's sake. So yeah, I think NC State's right there. I don't think this the pricing ac accurately reflects that. And NC State is my favorite bet. Uh, when looking at future odds in the ACC, certainly. All right, next team I'm going to mention is Wake Forest. Um, I'm not huge on their price, so they're plus 1,500. And it just seems a little wide to me. Uh, no, nothing crazy to me, but I think they're worth mentioning because I think they're just constantly an underrated team. And like I said, the ACC is pretty open. So um, the defense, the main, the main problem with them, the defense is just absolutely terrible. They're ranked 101st in EPA per play. By the way, I got these uh, EPA numbers. Where I pull them from is cfbgraphs.com. So go ahead and look them out. And I want to give them a shout out. So 101st in EPA per play on that side of the ball. They allowed nearly 30 points per game. They're ranked 88th in scoring defense. It's just not going to cut it. So that's the reason I'm not fully recommending a play on them. Now, why am I intrigued? Well, they ranked fourth in scoring last year. They scored 41 points per game. And that was despite losing Kenneth Walker in the transfer portal to Michigan State. And we see Kenneth Walker now got drafted by the Seahawks, right? That, that's a tremendous player. So a, a school like Wake Forest that doesn't typically, you know, recruit with the powerhouses, you would expect a big step back losing Kenneth Walker. And all they did is go out there and average 41 points per game. I think that's tremendous. I think it says a lot about this program. It says a lot about Dave Clawson. I think he's one of the better coaches in college football, uh, right? If, if he Obviously, recruiting is a part of coaching. But if he had those recruits, I think more people would, would give him respect, Um you have Sam Hartman back at quarterback after that fantastic year. You have A.T. Perry back at wide receiver. He's going to have another monster year. Um, and you do lose to Corey Roberson out wide, but I think to mitigate that, you return Donovan Green, who was expected to be one of your top receivers a year ago, and he got injured. And I do think he's very talented. I do think he's a pretty lethal deep threat and has some athleticism out there. Uh, and now he's back on campus for, you know, he's been there a while. So I, I think we can expect a big year out of him to make up for that Corey Roberson blow. Uh, the passing game is going to be amazing. And right, this is modern football. We see the passing game is important. If you're great at the passing game, you can go in there. And I think there's there's really no game on their schedule they can't win. They can win all these games. Um, they won't. They'll, they'll be up and down anytime your defense is that bad. But the fact of the matter is they can win every, every game on their schedule. Um, their road games, FSU, Louisville, NC State, those are all winnable. NC State one's going to be really tough. And, and, and Louisville especially. I, I'm kind of high on them too, as I'll talk about a little bit. But those are all winnable games. Um, you know, I'll give NC State the upper hand in that one, but those are all winnable is what I'll say. I think the toughest part about everything I've mentioned, the toughest part is that if you take a look here at the Atlantic and the Coastal, what you might notice, all three teams I just mentioned are in the Atlantic, Clemson, NC State, and Wake Forest. So right there, what that says to me, that kind of makes me cross off Wake Forest a little bit, maybe, maybe a small 
small wager there. Um, it still keeps NC State in the running for me because, like I said, I, I, I do like their chances against Clemson. I think, that, I think those odds don't reflect that. But what this says to me, right, is we have to take a deep dive, and I think some of my coastal got cut off there at the bottom. So forgive me. Still working on our editing skills here. Um, college football analyst first. YouTube guy. We're still getting there. We're still getting there. Thanks, thanks everyone who watches. Thanks for listening, by the way. Really appreciate it. So anyway, coastal. We have to identify a team that's going to come out of the coastal. So as I'm looking there, I think my favorite team in the coastal, and it pains me to say, because I'm not a big, uh, not a big Miami fan, uh, but I think my favorite's Miami. I think my favorite of those group uh, would be Miami at plus four seventy five. Why? Because someone has to come out of the coastal, and whoever it is is probably going to lose the the Atlantic representative. But that goes back to what I say. Most conferences, I'll be like, it doesn't matter who's going to win this side; they're going to lose to whoever it be Alabama, right? Whoever whoever it is. Some years there's a dominant team. Usually in the ACC it was Clemson. I don't think it's like that this year, right? I, I I just don't think it is unless Clemson gets back to where they are. But I think there were so many negatives from last year. You can't expect them to be a, a lethal powerhouse. And even though I like NC State, right? I think them versus Miami is you know closer to a coin flip game than than anything. So. Uh, why would I take Miami if, if forced to choose in the Coastal? Uh, well, they have a lot of talent, for one. And two, Mario Cristobal is the new head coach. Um, you have a lot of positive momentum going on. Uh, you have a big-time quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, right? Was the only quarterback since Joe Burrow to uh, have six straight games with 300 passing yards and three touchdowns, right? So he, he he's got a lot of positive momentum. Uh, Josh Gaddis as the offensive coordinator, right? Nobody really had many positive things to say about him before last year, but the fact of the matter is Michigan um, just went absolutely insane. And then he won the award for coordinator of the year, right? So that's 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 definitely not, you know, that's definitely nothing to uh, to sneeze at. And I think a big drawback when you look at this offense a year ago, they had the talent, right? You had Rooster Knight net running back. Now you're adding Henry Parrish, transfer for all Miss, right? And you have some talented wide receivers, although you really need them to step up. And you have three absolutely fantastic tight ends in Will Mallory, Elijah Arroyo, and Jaleel Skinner. You have three great tight ends. So um, so what's holding this offense back? Well, the offensive line has been really, really bad. And that's why I think this is a good a good marriage, because I think a lot of people don't really know what to think about Cristobal. Right? He, he, he was pretty good with the Ducks, but then they kind of leveled out. And I'm kind of the same way on what to think about him at Miami. But why I'm in general being positive is Mario Cristobal is an offensive line guy. I don't, I don't hear anybody talking about this. My, Mario Cristobal is fantastic at co coaching up the offensive line. And what he did for Oregon was was great, right? How he knows how to recruit, how he knows how to focus on the trenches, I think is a totally underrated part of his game people aren't discussing because I guess people don't pay attention to Pac-12 football, so they didn't notice what was going on in, in Oregon, and, uh, and that's okay. But um, there's a reason they now are viewed as having the best offensive line in the Pac-12, and it's not a mistake. It's because of Mario Cristobal. It's not talked about enough. I, I, I don't know if we'll see dividends immediately. I, I, I know we'll see dividends. I, I don't see how you can't. It's just to what extent is that. So anyway, that's that's why I like Miami. I, I think them and Pitt I would put pretty close, but I, I mentioned on one of my videos, Pitt has a lot of negatives, right? They lose Jordan Addison. You lose Kenny Pickett. You lose Mark Whipple as your offensive coordinator, a huge downgrade. They're going with Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Boston College, and they just scored 24 points per game a year ago, right? So I, I think in general... Um, I would give the upper hand to to Miami for those reasons. Uh, at plus 475, there's not a ton of meat on the bone, um, but I, I would give them the slight edge. I think the odds are correct in having them uh, there at the top. So um, you see Pitts at plus 575. I, I just, there's not enough meat on the bone. You know, a team like North Carolina really has to improve. So uh, in general, I think the most value there is with the NC State and then the other teams I mentioned. Uh, you know, I, the, the one team I didn't mention is Louisville. I looking over their roster, I was doing that today. Um, this could actually be a really talented team uh, with Malik Cunningham coming back at running back. You get you have three or sorry, at quarterback, you have three talented running backs. Uh, Scott Satterfield, I, I'm not sure what to think about him, but this is a big year for him. And I think we could look at him a lot differently if he, if he takes a big step forward like he can. Um, all right, you have Tyler Hudson transferring in. Wide receiver is going to be a stud. Amari Huggins-Bruce is going to take a step forward. And then looking at the defense, I think they're going to take a very big step forward. They have a very talented linebacking group, and I think the defensive line uh, is actually is actually somewhat solid this year. So I think Louisville is being slept on. Um, other than that, that's that's what I'm looking for. One of, one of the conferences I think is the most fun to talk about because maybe outside of like the Pac-12, um, it's probably the most wide open where I can make a case for quite a few different teams. Um, but even the Pac-12, I think you have kind of your upper crust. Like if USC or Utah didn't win, I think would be pretty surprising. You know, Oregon wouldn't be much of a surprise, but anyone else would be a surprise. Um, 
So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, this is brought to you by Daily Bread Media. This is Extra Dough with JD, and we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back with episode five next week.